everybody, and welcome to yet another edition of The Dark Match. We are here talking about Impact Wrestling, and God, God damn, damn it was a bad God. episode of Impact Wrestling. Damn it. Why? Why? <sighs> oh, that's not even the best part. We can talk about this shit for three hours tonight, folks. Can we just repress the memory, please? No, you don't get to forget things. Oh, right, well, yeah, do, let's start the introductions, No Leaf. Anyway, I'm No Leaf Clover, and joining me are... I'm Magpie, and if I sound wobbly, that's just because I just spent a good two hours getting punched. Yes, by me. And as always, I am your <laughs> poxy friend Backlash, and we're here once again with yet another What is Iron Cheek tweeting? <clears throat> is it something anti-Semitic? If you are the real, you follow me on the Instagram, the real Lion Chic. Otherwise, go fuck yourself forever. Self promotion, I love it. Wait, now I had to follow him on Instagram. If you're the it's real, it's bad enough I follow him, follow him on Twitter. What's next? Tumblr, Facebook, Pinterest. <laughs> and here's the Iron Chic tumbling a picture of him walking to the gym. And here's Iron Chic with his kitties. They are the real shit. Go fuck yourself <laughs> if you're not good as these kitties. <laughs> if Iron oh. Chic gets a friendster, if Iron Chic gets a friendster, I am officially tapping out. And here is a picture of the greatest character ever, uh, Simon Birch from the uh, from the Castlevania. He the real G. Fuck the t- Dracula. Uh, well. On four, we're talking about TNA Impact Wrestling tonight. Unfortunately, we uh, we have to start with the bad part. Uh, that's the unfortunate part of having of loving professional wrestling. Um, we'll I guess we'll talk about it more on the WWE episode, but bring it up now because we actually see a graphic uh, saying, you know, and kudos to TNA for doing it. It was real uh, classy yeah. of them. Uh, Wishing uh, Bill Moody, a.k.a. Paul Bearer, on farewell. Uh, unfortunately, he passed away this week. So uh, I, I that's it's one of the worst parts about being a wrestling fan is kind of all the deaths that, that surrounds it. But, um, it, but in, a, in a way, yes, that, that's very much a true statement. But at least, you know, he got checked out by God and rather, you know, something else, you know, as we're prone to in being a fan of this sport, you know? Like, it wasn't anything, like, a negative death. It wasn't, death it wasn't or, drugs yeah. or anything crazy. It was just, you know, for all intents and purposes, from what we know, just natural causes. And um, hopefully he's in a better place and he's with his wife now. So um, after yeah. after this little, uh, after that bit of business, uh, we get a video package uh, looking back at last week when fucking... Bully Ray and Jeff Hardy teamed up because we're going to have faces versus faces at lockdown for some reason. Dude, does anyone else smell shenanigans on the way? I, was smell- I, thought, I, w- I thought I was smelling bullshit. Well, that too, but shenanigans has a taste to it, you know? Shenanigans, shenanigans kind of a-, a bit more oaky. Yeah, it, it smells like wood shop back in the eighth grade, you yeah. know? It doesn't yeah. smell bad, but you notice it as soon as like you smell it. You're just like shenanigans. Whereas bullshit is bullshit. <laughs> bullshit is bullshit. indeed bullshit. Very profound. profound and now ro- profound words from Magpie. Bullshit is bullshit. <laughs> now make your life better. <laughs> oh god. Well, our lives and aren't then- gonna get any better because we're talking about impact. So <sighs> I don't Let's even get know. to the good. Austin Aries comes out. Yeah, Austin Aries. No, no, before that, before that. We uh, get oh, yeah. The- we got to talk about lethal lockdown because I guess we're still doing that. Well, not even before that. Can I just fucking- say lethal lockdown is officially one of the dumbest ideas I've ever seen? It was yeah. cool, and then it just went to hell fast. It, it's like they're... It's like the... It's like the WWE's equivalent of Survivor Series. It was cool when they first started doing it. Now nobody takes it that seriously anymore. Wow. But it's just a thing that's happening. Really well, you have an awesome... Oh, right, no, leave. I'm sorry. 
I said, did anyone ever really take Lethal Lockdown seriously, though? Well, it, I, there was a cool one where it was like, uh, I don't remember if it was, it was the one where, god damn, I think it, it was the one where Christian was in this lethal lockdown, and it was pretty sweet. I think like while Chris, Chris Harris was in there, Jeff Jarrett, Abyss, Joe, uh, that was really good. The match can be good, and but it's just like when you pair them up with just such a bullshit team, like you have an awesome team in Eric Young, Samoa Joe, Magnus, James Storm, and there's one more guy in the group, wasn't there? Uh, I think. Yeah, anyway, you have an awesome team like that, but you pair them up with uh, two brutes that no one cared about in the WWE, the grown-up semen of Eric Bischoff, and fucking uh, Wes Brisk... Oh, no, he's not in the match. Uh, uh, D'Lo Brown, apparently, or whoever the fuck. I don't know. No one cares about well, getting it. Well, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Yeah, yeah spoilers. Yeah. I'm going to have to put a spoiler. Way to go, Magpie. No, I'll, I'll you put... ruined the surprise. No, 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 I'll put a spoiler sensor on there. Oh, okay. It's like Scooby Doo, man. There's like five other people. Who else could it have been? Or two. Well, lethal lockdown. Lethal lockdown has basically become the annual. This stable versus this stable. The stable of good guys between versus the newest NWO clone every they, they, single they, they, year. They, exactly. They made it the blow off the, thing, you know. Who was the stable last year? I've actually been trying to remember. Immortal. Immortal. No, uh, no. Immortal was uh, 2011, wasn't that? Oh shit! Yeah, you're right. Um, uh, no, it was 2011, and then it blew. Uh, it had like lethal, the lethal lockdown match, and that was really just like the falling apart of that. Or no, 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 no! It was Team Bischoff versus Team Garrett. Oh yeah, yeah. Father versus grown up come. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh. Before we go to the ring with Austin Aries, the mystery cameraman catches up with Kurt Angle. And Kurt Angle, as we all know, ripped off the mask of the VP of Aces and Eights. It was Old Man Jenkins this entire time, the park owner of across town. He was trying to kill Impact so he could put <laughs> the he could put Orlando Studios out of uh, Universal Studios out of business so his park can get more business. <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> and that... he would have gotten away with it, too, if it wasn't for Kurt Angle and that fucking dog. Frankly, that would have been much more entertaining than what they go. <laughs> that, would, I, I... that would kick so much ass, Kurt Angle and a dog. They book that gimmick. <laughs> It'd be like I want to see that. Two. No, Turner and Hooch 3. Well, that killed the mood. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Austin Aries <laughs> comes to the ring <clears throat> and uh, basically just comes out to say he's awesome because he that's, that's all he does anymore, really. Hey, yeah. he's awesome, has amazing matches, and is, tr and is hell-bent on getting every title imaginable in TNA. That's what a champion should be like. Yeah, he's basically bitching because he has the totally legitimate gripe that Hulk Hogan handed Bully Ray the fucking title. Yep. This is a pro you can't have your heels be right. You that's the fun. That's a fundamental thing. Mick, Fo Mick Foley, when he was talking about heels on one, I can't remember what video it was, but he said a heel has to believe that he is right, even when it's obvious that he is not right. But when a heel is very clearly right. Then and how the fuck is he against uh, him? Obvious. Here's a better question. Why is Austin Aries even a heel? Because, because they, needed a, they needed a reason for Jeff Hardy to go for the belt and give it to a uh, less of, lesser of a wrestler. Oh, he's a bad guy, so we automatically should give it to this guy who's not even half a wrestler Aries is. Yeah, we have this... Can we kind of created a new star by giving this guy the title. I wonder how we can fuck it all up. Uh, anyway, he wants to challenge Jeff Hardy. He wants to get down to business and like really take it to him because he was trying to play mental mind games with Bully Ray and Jeff Hardy to get him flustered. But now he's just going to get back to the ring and kick ass. 
So Jeff Hardy comes out to new music, which I'm glad for, because that last... Anything Jeff Hardy writes sucks. This one was okay, but really, I'm just glad he got a new theme. Comes out, and Aries is on him like ugly, in a, like ugly on a Rolling Stones group picture. No, no, no. He's on him like ugly on Lady Tapa. Oh, we'll get to that prehistoric bitch in a moment. Oh, God. <laughs> Casual misogyny. No, this is misogyny for... I'll, I'll talk about it later. This isn't just because, you know, she's a the chick, you know. To, to move on. <laughs> so this match... I'm getting thinking about that. <laughs> we'll, we'll get to that part. But this match... Uh, it was... I thought it was a good match. Yeah, it was good. It was a, these guys have good chemistry. They really do. You know, Aries yeah, will just, like, keep pressure... Makes, it makes Ares even less sense that on... my Aries isn't number one contender. Yeah, yeah, I mean, Aries will keep pressure on you and then get, get the fluids, but Jeff really knows how to time, like, his big moves, so he can just, like, come up off of that and just get something really good in there and just do, like, uh, follow up with that. So it's a good chemistry balance between the two, you know? One's just, like, yeah. this fluid guy, and the other Jeff... one hits his spots right and looks flashing. It's awesome. It balances it out. Yeah, Jeff has always done his best work when he's, like, in the Ricky Steamboat, take a whole shitload of punishment and then somehow come out on top kind of thing. Like, that's Jeff's M.O., and these two worked really well together, and this was a good opening match, which I thought was going to set the tone for a good episode of Impact, but God knows nope, I can't yeah. never... <laughs> And how wrong you God, were! God knows I can never, ever hope for anything good from this fucking company. So, the match ends with, uh, well, it gets to the end where uh, Jeff fights back, like Noli said, and then hits a twist of fate, and Aries is out. He is completely out. And he's, you know, Jeff's going to capitalize on He's in position for the Swanton Bomb. And <laughs> Matt Morgan 7, this time we're serious about this push comes out. <laughs> what? In the fuck? Uh, carbon Footprint, DQ, party winner. Matt, oh, Matt Morgan. Morgan wants to get to the top again. Matt Morgan. They... <laughs> But just go back, Lashy. Let's let him breathe. Some, who in the... F- it's like they keep starting things with this guy, and he either gets injured or they just forget about him. <laughs> oh, wait, what, what, what happened? Matt uh, Morgan. Where are we? Oh, oh, I was wondering why the fuck I passed out. Ugh. Ugh. I'm, I'm drinking cool. NyQuil before the show. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I was more passing out because Matt Morgan is boring as fuck. Matt Morgan isn't that. Matt Morgan's blowing someone. I'm calling it. Oh, great. Now he made Magpie fall asleep. He just... No one cares about Matt fucking Morgan. He's just a guy. That's all he... He's just a guy. He's a tall guy. That's all he is. He has is. no personality. He's a tall guy with a beard. You know who else was a tall guy with a beard? Snitsky. I'd rather watch Snitsky. Can we watch Snitsky? Well, at least Snitsky had something to his character. I oh, would goodness. rather watch Snitsky punt a million babies into the crowd than watch fucking Matt Morgan. Oh, Veda Scott, you're really good at cuddling. You're such a pretty <laughs> girl with glasses and red hair. <laughs> Magpie. Huh? What? Yeah, we're Damn it! Talk- I was in the arms of a beautiful woman. What the fuck am I doing here? You know I'm here to ruin all your dreams. I love you, Veda Scott. <laughs> and if you don't know who she is, look up her promos. Anyway, let's move on to the next disappointment. <laughs> okay. Next disappointment. Though there's... <laughs> oh, let me take this one. What? So, Matt Morgan gets the... Matt Morgan does the promo. He's back. He wants to destroy everyone on the roster. He's serious. Blah. So we get to Sting, and Sting has Team TNA, who is prepped to go up against uh, Team Aces and Why Do We Give a Shit uh, this Sunday at Lockdown. So to inspire his teammates, he decides to teach him how to do a war cry. Uh, and he just, I... just scream. Maybe you could teach them. Let to... me see your war face. I would say. Ah! I would say maybe you could teach them to wrestle better than I realize it's Sting. Wrestle? Dude, Eric Young, Samoa Joe, J- James Storm. Uh, okay, maybe Magnus can use a little bit more polishing. 
Uh, These fucking are bad Pepe. wrestlers. They just they don't they don't fucking. Yeah, I don't know. Well, I didn't mean like they're bad. Well, they do, like, they don't. like maybe you should be doing something that uh, I don't know will actually help you win the match. <laughs> All right. Now remember, when you hit the stinger splash, you need to pump your fist really fast. Now remember, you have to beat your chest like an eight. Whoa, sir! What happens if like one of the other guys catches it off? Shouldn't it be ready for like the counter attack of? Shut up and pound your chest when you do the splash. <laughs> oh God, I don't, I don't. Uh. Anyways, the reason they're getting this all hyped up is because they're competing to see who has the man advantage in lethal lockdown, which never fucking matters ever. It's, it's always the heels, anyways. Yeah, the, you can't give the faces the advantage. Why would you? That goes against the psychology of the whole fucking thing. Why okay, would well. you give the faces the man advantage? The entire point of the man advantage is that the heels get to beat up on the faces. No, leave. Unless, no, leave. Uh, no. It's, uh. it's TNA. Logic doesn't dwell there. <laughs> to, to dust off an old catchphrase of the dark match. <laughs> I'm sorry. I almost forgot. <laughs> I'm sorry for that, man. I just had to stop you. You would have just hurt yourself. Anyway, let's go to the next thing we don't care about. Matt Morgan hey, again. We, no, wait, <sighs> Matt Morgan again? I thought it was a video package. No, we no the, no. Uh, the Harvey cam catches up with Matt Morgan and tries to get an interview with him. But Matt Morgan doesn't have enough of a personality, so that doesn't last very long. Then we get the video package. Hey, speaking of lack of personality. Kurt Angle and Wes, Wes Briscoe. Oh. Hey, everybody. We have one of the greatest wrestlers that walks the face of the planet today. We have a pay-per-view coming up. Let's book him against Wes fucking Briscoe. Okay, wait sure. A minute, wait a minute. Wait, Why not? What did you just say about Kurt Angle? He yeah. is one of the... He, come on, he is one of the greatest wrestlers of all Dude, time. Maybe, maybe five or ten years ago. He's still good. If he you, ain't like he ain't generic. Kurt, okay, he ain't generic. Put, oh, he ain't CM Punk now. But that J- Kurt Angle can still work a fucking match, especially uh, with something he can stick his teeth into. If, yeah, I know. If but, Kurt but, Angle but, went back to the WWE, can you imagine the kind of match he'd have with Punk? Just think about it. Daniel Sin. Admittedly, oh my, yes. oh my god, that'd be amazing. He, he can still put on five star matches, but I always feel uncomfortable watching him fucking kill himself. Because oh. he will eventually kill himself. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. With, with the condition he's in, it's like I can't, well, I can't enjoy luckily, Kurt matches anymore. Well, luckily he's finding Wes Briscoe, so he doesn't have to worry about getting hurt in this match. Well, maybe he does. Right. Be be like, the, take that, Wes you Briscoe big is probably genie. more likely to uh, fuck something up. Uh, yeah. Oh, God. They gave <laughs> Wes Briscoe a microphone. Yeah, I really can after hearing him talk, and I'm glad I give the Impact Zone fans, uh, uh, sometimes I don't give them enough credit as they should, but they completely shit it all over this, and I'm proud of them. And then listening to this promo, I'm just like, you know, I don't wish harm on wrestlers, but he's not a wrestler, so I hope really that match just evolves into a prison raping, because Angle's crazy enough to do it. Why not? <laughs> he needs to be humbled. They gave Wes Briscoe a microphone again. By the he way, you have Taz talk. in your group to be the mouthpiece. Why aren't you using him? Granted, Taz is insipid, but he's a fucking mouthpiece. Use it. He can't talk at all. I don't even understand what the fuck he said in this promo. The fact that we're looking at a recap that fucking deciphered that marble mouth bastard is a <laughs> fucking miracle to me. Well, and the time for talking is over. Kurt Angle comes down and starts whooping ass. And then who tears them apart? The agents. Because they've been effectual. Why not? They, they, all, the yeah. they, they just got to get Al Snow on, on TV. Strike. They always got to get Al Snow on TV somehow. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, because shit, uh, I mean, uh, my God, because shit just can't get bad enough. You know, want to know who the vice president a fucking aces and eights is. Woo! Go ahead. You're looking at the real deal. Let's play a game. 
Let's play a game of people who would be more interesting people to have in this in this fucking feud. I'll start. Rico's a better VP than fucking D'Lo Brown. I would <laughs> rather watch Rico. Oh my god. Oh my oh, god. No, I never I'd thought I'd never I never thought I'd hear that guy brought up again. You know who I'd rather watch? I'd rather watch fucking Sean O'Hare. <laughs> you know who I'd rather watch? I'd rather watch Mark fucking Jindrak. That's who I'd rather watch. I'd rather oh let me play. I'd rather watch Kenny Dykstra do a promo. You know who I'd rather watch? I'd re- well, actually, I would rather watch Monty Brown, so that doesn't really count. Um, let's see. We miss you, Monty. Uh, let's see. I would rather watch Kevin the Taskmaster Sullivan than fucking D'Lo Brown. And the list keeps going on to a 9,099.9 billion. I'd add in, but really fucking anyone. It, it's honestly like Kevin- they're just like they couldn't. Obviously, with the reputation, they couldn't get anyone from the outside that would really make an impact. And they decided not to use any of the boys in the back. So they're just like, you know what? We had him be the body filler. Why not just have him be the fucking character? Okay, sure. Why not? I'd rather watch NWO Sting. Not Wolfpack Sting. NWO Sting, a.k.a. Fake Sting. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We, we've we dragged this on long enough, and I'm going to yeah. get through this episode <laughs> It's Dilo. It's Dilo. I still can't believe he has a job, uh, and he's getting Mike Time Brown. They're just they just go with the person who makes the least amount of sense in these angles. Quickly, we need to have a big payoff for our angle. Uh, uh, you, uh, key grip. The guy who's holding the key grip. You're your leader. Bases and eights. Go. <laughs> just. Just when you thought this group couldn't get less impressive, and don't get me wrong, I liked D'Lo like 10 fucking years ago, but seriously? D'Lo? Why? Because James Mitchell had too much dignity to come back. That's probably actually it. Oh, I got another one. Blue Meanie. Yeah. I would rather watch Blue Meanie than D'Lo Brown. Fuck. <laughs> okay. No, no, no. I'd rather watch fake Blue Meanie from Hardcore Justice. <laughs> <laughs> Burt Reynolds laugh. <laughs> okay, let's get through this. Let's get through this. <laughs> oh, God. D'Lo, though. Seriously. No, they couldn't think of anyone? D'Lo? Really? Really? There's no one? You couldn't pull Spike fucking Dudley out? Okay, fine. Let's move on. <sighs> Next up... <sighs> It's Aces and Eights backstage. They're like, we're awesome. Yay, yay. And then... You know what? I'm going to go find somebody better than D'Lo Brown. Play the... Somebody edit in the uh, Lonely Walking Away music from The Incredible Hulk. I'll be back. I'm not going to do that. Anyways, (laughs) Devon versus versus Sting. Oh, God. This match is about as good as you can imagine a match with D'Lo versus Sting Ming. Which is to say, not very good. <sighs> I mean, I I think I think part of the reason that it sucks so bad is that we just hate this angle so much that it colors our... <laughs> These guys are very far over the hill. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think... I mean, Sting, the only person at this point that can ever get a good match out of Sting is The Undertaker. And Sting's such a pussy, he's never going to go to the WWE, so I just don't care anymore. Devon is capable of putting on a good match with the right opponent, just he's never put with the right opponent anymore. So it's, it's, it's just this giant nothing of a match. It's, it's, like, it's like that layer of fucking fat that gets skimmed. It's just, it's just, yeah. This match was schmaltz, basically. 
Oh, but Devon wins because, you know, yeah. Okay, I found this random homeless guy that just walks around my house. <laughs> I, th- <laughs> I think he would be an interesting VP of, uh, interesting VP of Aces and Eights. Magpie, what have we told you about fucking carrying around homeless people that you don't know? Don't steal their organs and sell them on the market. Have you stolen their organs? Uh, the ones he can live without. All right, fine. We'll let you pass this time. Anyways. So, Magpie, we, anything we, to say about Devon versus Sting? It, what the fuck do I have to say? <laughs> no. <laughs> That's what he's for itself. It's Devon versus Sting in 2013. <laughs> Why is this happening? Why are we here? Uh, okay, why is the world title on the line? There, that's my snarky comment for this match. Moving on. And the TV title? No, the world title, because both talents are that amazing at this point. I think Davon is overdue for a push. I will super kick you in the face for even joking about that. And I'll reverse it into an ankle lock. The sit down. I'll reverse cut. your ankle lock, and then I'll pop up, kip up, and give you the super kick anyways. And then I'll absorb the blow and then give you a big ass toothpick, uh, 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 flying Larry to the throat. Both in the back of the head with a steel chair. (laughs) And then I'll hit the Cena code and then I'll just suplex you. (laughs) Okay. Next disappointment. Uh, We see the gut check people walking around backstage because they always have to be joke Because gut check is a thing. Yeah, and then we see Velvet Sky uh, talking to uh, the mystery cameraman about how okay, awesome this is it is. Cool. <laughs> yeah, how great it is to be the knockout champion. And Gail has, and Gail comes up and basically rains all on her parade about how she's already beaten Velvet and about how she should be the champion. And yeah. Velvet just looks at her and then smacks the shit out of her. See, this is how Gail away. Kim, with her weak promo skills, could be actually effective in her talking. If she just comes up like an annoying, uh, damn, I was gonna throw out the, I was gonna throw out the bomb, but um, yeah, don't if she do comes that. up annoying and pretentious as she does, and then she, you know, just in the backstage, just real quick, no, nothing too long, and then you know, just have like, Velvet Sky just bitch slap her. There, effective. She's annoying. She can't speak, but you know, she's snotty and pretentious. There you go. Don't give her a inlet. And don't give her a mic in the ring. Nothing comp- nothing complicated, but now they're in a feud. That's all you- there. There. Exactly. If, if more feuds like work like that in TNA, there would be no more wars or something. No more wars. Okay. Yeah, if I up. could change and you could change, then maybe <laughs> maybe we all could change. <laughs> okay. Uh, that was weird. <laughs> It's from Rocky. Yeah, I know it's from I Rocky. Don't... I just don't, I just don't get the connection. <laughs> oh, who cares? <sighs> Moving on. It's the Eddie Memorial Tour with Velvet Sky versus Daniels and Kazarian and Gail wait, Kim. No, we skip, wait, we skipped a part. We skipped oh, we did. Part. Yeah, uh, we skipped going backstage with the uh, gut check judges. And uh, they announced that Taz will no longer be part of Gut Check because... No! Oh, no. What a stable part of Gut Check. I will will never take this seriously again. What credibility... All credibility it had is lost. (laughs) And then we get Taz's replacement, which is actually not that bad. It's Nightmare Danny Davis, the head trainer for OVW. (laughs) After this decision, not that bad? Okay. Let's, Let's go with that phrasing. They so also refuse to worse name... than Taz, so I don't care. They also refuse to name drop John Cena, which is weird because this company has no problem name dropping WWE every fucking chance it gets. But uh, Pritchard is trying to like put over how awesome Danny Davis is, and he's like, you know, he's he's trained some of the best wrestlers in the world, you know, like a certain guy that you can't see, huh? Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Shut like, up! The smart, the smart, the smart marks will totally rip on you for that. I don't know. Maybe I don't know. Maybe WWE is actually cracking down on them after the whole lawsuit thing. You can say his fucking name. 
Well, then they it's just have no it. balls. I mean, yeah, it's Cena's legal name. It isn't like you're saying a name they own. Like, if you said Daniel no, wait, Bryan. Wait, 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 wait. Do- doesn't WWE actually own Cena's name? I don't know. No, Cena owns really his name. Own his name. They can't really own his name. Like, I'm pretty sure they can. No, we'll get back like, to that time. To TNA, if you went to TNA, you know, in some fucking alternate reality, if you went to TNA, he could still be John Cena. It's his name. <laughs> yeah, and then he would be irrelevant in six months. TNA would find a way to fuck up having John Cena in their company. It'd be the, uh, it'd be the greatest thing ever. John Cena fucking debuts on Impact Wrestling, and it's the biggest event in company history, and then he jobs the Hulk Hogan. Then again, then, then, then again, they did have Cena job to The Rock, so. But that's for our next hour of shows. Ah! Oh, God damn it. <laughs> Let's move on because I'm starting to see red. We we get to the ring. Ang urge to kill rising. We get to the ring. Al Snow. Wait, no, no, no. We're skipped apart again. I don't care. We're skipping it. We're moving no, on. We're not skipping we it. We are not doing Is this. It... I am not letting you. You are not getting away with this, Magpie. Is the Eddie Guerrero Memorial Tour in Velvet Sky versus Christopher Daniels? Frankie Kazarian, Gail Kim. Wait, didn't the gut check thing happen first? No, they just they just talked about they just talked about you know oh, who they were possibly getting. And, and I'll yes. talk more about what they said when we right. But, but let's talk about the. I thought that came first. I apologize. Let's talk about the match. Um. Okay. It happened. Yeah, nothing spectacular. Um, Velvet. Velvet did slap Daniels. That was pretty cool. Yeah, uh, you know nothing. No, nothing too major happened in the match, really. Um, nothing that I can, you know. I mean, I do remember. I do remember one pretty bad botch where. Uh, Hernandez knocks, uh, he knocks someone down, and then he does like, uh, what's that move? What's, oh, he does the like catapult move where you grab the guy's legs and you bring him up, and Ch- and Chavo tries to do a drop kick, but the guy only halfway falls. It was a really awkward spot, and it doesn't it doesn't help that fucking. The lame ass that's on commentary whose name I can't be bothered to remember ever fucking said Hernandez did it when Chavo threw the drop kick. Am I just talking to myself? Yes. Bad guys oh, win. Yeah. I don't really remember. <laughs> I don't know. Like, it, like, yeah, I noticed that. But with Hernandez, you just got to kind of expect that shit. <sighs> Nothing really happened. That was that. Interesting in this match. Um, Gail, Frankie, uh, the heels win, basically, which was the most interesting part. Mm. So now Gail ga- so now Gail has a victory over the knockout champion, which, you know. Which, which is what they do. Bad. That's what they do. It's like you, get, you win the knockout championship, you j- start jobbing. Yeah. You win the like, knockout champion, and the first thing they do is they have you lose to the number one contender. <laughs> because why not? Uh, at any rate, uh, Sting is. Uh, oh shit! We forgot to talk about the only interesting thing that happened during Sting and Devon's match. The fact that Sting got busted over the fucking head with the bottle. <laughs> oh, yeah, that. But I, we don't know if that's kayfabe. Like, I think it's kayfabe because it was, like, the guy was wearing Aces and Eights hat. But some dude in the audience just mashes Sting with a fucking beer bottle. And Wait, I Sting is busted wide, wide open. So... We come back and Sting's all pissed off backstage, and he's 
beating the crap out of a steel chair with his baseball bat, and uh, that'll teach you for that'll teach you for comforting fans that come here just to throw bottles at me. <laughs> Stupid chair. And uh, I want to re and uh, I know we don't usually read directly from the results, but I want to read what he says because it kind of we don't read results. <laughs> this yeah. is from our memory. <laughs> no, I want to. I I, I want to say what they said. Sting is right backstage up. flipping out and smashing stuff over what happened with Devon and D'Lo, and then we do the requisite. I need to know where you're at promo. They do every damn time Sting or Hogan is in a match with anyone. This is the promo in which Sting goes, I need to know where your loyalty lies. And everyone goes, our loyalty lies with you. And then Sting gets all happy and woos and stuff. Obviously, if they're in a tag team match with you, their loyalty is with you. you fucking dumbass. We are with you, Maximus. Uh, so, yeah, I know. I kind of went far for that one. Time for more AJ Styles' uncomfortableness. <laughs> so AJ Styles basically is Bigfoot now. Yep. <laughs> you see him every once in a while. It's it's very short at best and brief. And when you do, he's a little big and just a, a lot of hairy and shagginess to it. Basically, AJ Styles rehashes the same goddamn thing that it would James Storm. They love doing this. I don't get it. I don't get Maybe it they, either. Maybe they just like uh, shots of small towns. No, it doesn't make any sense. Why is AJ upset? Like, I don't, I don't understand. Is AJ pissed off? Is AJ depressed because he lost some matches? Literally, that's the only thing that happened. He lost, he lost the matches to fucking Christopher Daniels, and then he lost like two more matches after that. And now his entire his sanity is damn near cracked. No, I think he's just. I I think he's just kind of starting to realize this is my life. Because I can never do. WWE is never going to take me. I'm this is I'm stuck in this forever. (laughs) <laughs> it's like at least when they did this with James Storm it was sort of it sort of made sense because James Storm had just lost the title after winning it and he he made this big promise that he was going to he was going to beat Bobby Roode and then he lost and he was despondent over that and yeah it's kind of lame it's weak sauce but at least it made sense AJ has no reason to be such a huge fucking pussy about losing some matches. Literally, all he did was lose. He lost to Daniels, and then that's it. That That's all that happened. Boo fucking who? You know how many fucking people have lost to Daniels? Well, actually, in this company, not very many people have lost to Daniels. But that's not the point. Well, if you count 2010... <laughs> <sighs> well, yeah, we're not going to see AJ Styles wrestle for probably about, like, what, do you think three more weeks are going to stretch this out? Well, probably. during the next match, they mentioned that AJ Styles is going to be back on, he's going to be back not at uh, Genesis, he's going to be back at uh, at the next Impact in Chicago when they oh, officially okay. go live, so. Chicago. Yeah. yeah, so we'll see AJ Styles and all his bearded glory live on TV, and he can cut a promo that doesn't make any sense then. <sighs> okay. <laughs> Next yeah, thing, buddy. Backlash, please segue and transition us. Okay. Two people we don't care about against two guys who probably deserve better. A.K.A. <laughs> <laughs> Knox and Garrett Bischoff versus Samoa Joe and Brutus Magnus. Again, I don't give enough to, to, uh, credit to the Impact fans sometimes, and I'm talking about the non-plants. Man, they were just uh, that you can't wrestle chant was just oh, it brought a tear to my eye. It was so true. That's the thing. It's completely utterly true. Garrett can't wrestle, and he's only there for one fucking reason. This is charging clotheslines. <laughs> I've, we've seen nepotism in wrestling. Nep, nepotism is nothing new, 
but my fucking god. It's never been this blatant. Yeah. When you make Jesse, Jesse, uh, uh, the little bitch boy of Tara look credible, man, you have a level of, like, sucking at a... You took sucking to a whole new spectacular feat. It just... Nothing... Nothing about Garrett being a wrestler makes any sense except for the fact that Eric Bischoff is his fucking dad. And it shows. I mean, my God. uh, Just... Who cares? Who cares about Garrett Bischoff? Well, apparently his dad, so now we have to watch his grown-ups come just re- uh, have reprehensible Can matches. Can you please stop referencing Eric Bischoff's cum? <laughs> what? Well, I'm talking about Garrett. That's what he is. <laughs> if he had no, some other no. attribute I could highlight, I would. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I mean, God. I, I, I'll sink my teeth into somebody I don't like, but at least I'll give you credit for good, but fuck. <laughs> There's nothing anyway. I can say about the guy other than he, he slicks back his hair in the douchey way, the proper fashion. That's it. Oh, God. That was weak, I know. And sure enough, <laughs> you can't pin Garrett Bischoff because we got to make him look strong, so Luke Gallows is the one who gets pinned. Christ. Anyways, remember, remember that these matches have been for the man advantage and lethal lockdown, which apparently matters for some reason. So now it's all tied up because it's always all tied up. It, it, it's false. It's like, it really. it's like they wrote the script for lethal lockdown like five years ago or however long ago they invented this concept and they haven't changed it. Not really. This, they, 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 this is the exact same thing they do every year. Yeah, yep. exactly. Who's going to get the man advantage? It's always the fucking heels. They might as well just they might as well just have a segment where fucking Hulk Hogan comes out and he flips a coin for the man advantage. As a matter of fact, did, that did would you actually that one year? Be, No, I don't think so. I, swear I think I'm doing time. that one year. Not with Hulk Hogan, but somebody did it. I, I think every year they've had this thing where the two teams have a wrestling match to determine who has the man advantage. I, I say they didn't do the coin thing because the coin thing makes too much sense. Like you could you could even gimmick the coin so you know which what side it's gonna fucking land on or here's a limited edition collectible TNA coin made from <laughs> real gold. <laughs> This item valued at two hundred and thirty-seven thousand dollars can be yours for four easy payments of twenty bucks. Uh, oh god! Uh. And on the back of the coin is immortalizing the moment where Hulk Hogan and Dixie Carter shook hands. You can have this in your collection with your nine eleven coins and your Bin Laden's Bin Shot coins. <laughs> Anyways, Samoa Joe and Brutus win. It's all tied up. And, yeah. Uh, apparently, there was some, like, fake tension between Brutus and Joe, which is weird because they were tag team partners, but whatever. Then we get uh, Kenny King uh, saying yeah, that yes. ever since he came to TNA, he's the main event and he's the star of the X Division. He won the title from RVD last week. And it doesn't matter who he faces at lockdown. Because he's going to do whatever it takes to hold on to his belt. Simple, effective, why can't they do this all the time? Because they hate us. And they it's because, it, I, I honestly try to understand TNA sometimes, and I think that in their minds, they're being new and revolutionary. But really, they're just being confusing and stupid. I think okay. in their minds, those things are the fucking same thing. Oh, God. <sighs> okay. Next. Time for Eric Young and James Storm. Oh, good. Two people this... I actually really enjoy. Yeah, we'll get ready to have that pissed down the drain. Because it's time for Sting again. 
I used to love Sting. I really do. What the hell happened? That guy was one of my favorite wrestlers of all time back in when oh I was my a God. kid. Like, I, I've, yeah, I know. Me too. I mean, like, it's like I said, there is only one more match that the, that fucking Sting needs to have. And that's a match versus The Undertaker. And he won't go to the WWE. So until then, he's essentially worthless. I mean, not worthless, but he doesn't fucking matter. He's got one more match that he needs to have, and he can ride off into the sunset. Until he does that, he's just another fucking old guy on fucking TNA. Yep. They have lots of those. But there is a lot of sting on this episode, so... Well, my childhood dreams dashed. Let's see my friend. Let's see the present get like uh, utterly disappointed. Yeah, James Storm. Uh, I mean, Eric Young gets this really passionate, you know, bold. I want to be out there. I want to wrestle to give you the last spot and to give us the advantage and lead the lockdown. And then Storm's just like, I'll do whatever it takes. And, and Sting's like, you know what? Fuck you, funny guy. Storm's going to go out there. Man, yeah. he should have gone with Anderson. I mean, I mean not, he should have gone with Eric against An, uh, Anderson, dude. He could have like he could have applied like, dude. If he just used the strategy that he he does Muda's move set, he proved he could beat Anderson using that. Oh my god, you're right. <laughs> uh, anyways, it's time for gut check. Oh, wait, wait. wait. I'm wait, seeing red. Did we skip a part? What? No. Wait, no. Uh, I did I skip think... a part. My fault. We did. Uh, because yeah, because uh, I we talked about how the gut check judges met backstage, but we didn't talk about the fact that they were gonna eliminate someone before they got out into the ring. So like Super Saiyan. Earth, that pissed off. So the segment they have, they come out and they say, you know, only one of you can move forward in the competition. And the person who is going to be moving forward is... So let's break this down. You have, and this is coming off the basis of the last match, you have athletic fit woman who can actually work in the ring and is a solid is solid enough to where you can get her and then get she, ha, she can get the fundamentals down and then also polish her up to be a good wrestler. Not only that, the unique quality that none of the knockouts are really submission specialists. And her coming from an MA background, that would be an interesting and unique character thing to do because we never <coughs> excuse me, we never really had a knockout submission submission specialist. You know, that's an awesome and innovating thing I'd like to see. Going up against the six foot seven prehistoric clumsy bitch who was awkward, didn't really do anything effective, was just stocky at best, and made when you can make David Otunga look credible, that's how you know you suck. Oh, oh, oh. no, fuck her. Oh. If she actually had talent, I would actually be like, Oh, this is great. This is like, no, motherfucker. I was reading uh, review sites and they were like, and this is probably some bot or just an idiot. Uh, sometimes they run the same. This guy was like, oh, I hope she gets the pick, man. She's going to be the new Awesome Kong. Let me tell you about Awesome Kong. Awesome Kong could work. Awesome Kong had striking ability. Awesome Kong was unique and didn't just, like, rely on your uniqueness. She actually worked. She was awesome. She can make you look good if you suck. She carried Christine Hemi through the match. Can this prehistoric bitch do that? No. So who do they pick? Who do they pick? <laughs> I'm very sorry, Magpie. <laughs> I'm trying I not to laugh. <laughs> I um, want that division to be good. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> it really can be. You have the talent. Just put more people in there with interesting things. But no. You fuck it up. <laughs> you keep so fucking it up. <laughs> The only thing that made me feel better about this awful decision, and if my anger and just uh, uh, sentence fragments didn't give off the point, the big bitch gets the title, and I'm proud of the Impact Zone fans because each and every single one of them chanted, no, no, This was no. a good crowd, I'll give you that. Yeah. Yes. This crowd yes. was awesome. Yes. 
They chanted no. They completely shit it all over her awful wrestling skills, as they should. And when you actually have a demonstration, although this isn't new in the past, but when you have a demonstration of your bookers not giving a shit about your fans, especially when they're very, very vocal about it, oh, wow, don't listen to their opinion. It doesn't matter. We're DNA has never given a shit about their fans unless they're giving them... They never have, and this is just another example of that. And the only thing that made me feel better about this, the only thing that made me feel better about this, and it was Nuno, God bless him, was like, well... It's gut check. We're not going to see her for another six months. We're not going to see her ever on TV. So I'm like, okay, cool. At least the gene pool won't be diluted for a long period of time. It sucks. We can't get Taylor Hendricks, who actually is really good and has a lot of agility and natural ability. Oh, no. We're going to go with the prehistoric bitch. The thing about it is everything that Magpie just ranted about, you know, the judges talked about before they eliminated uh, Ivelisse. They actually, they actually had a discussion in which they pretty much, in basic English, say, Ivelisse is the better wrestler. That was the discussion they had. Ivelisse is the better wrestler, but they felt Lady, I guess, had the better look, and she was unique. Yeah, or yeah, let me go with that. Let's go with that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, sure. She has the better look and no talent going up against the beautiful Puerto Rican chick that can happen to put you in a triangle choke before you even notice it. Okay, sure. And Ivelisse looked... Ivelisse, I don't know if that was kayfabe or not, but she looked fucking pissed. Probably not. She should! <laughs> she, Ivelisse fucking carried that monster to the entire match. It's been, it's Shit. it has actually been documented. It was like watching the fighter pilots go up against King Kong. No, it actually has been documented that uh, they don't give the gut check people a script, so that was so that wasn't kayfabe. Yeah, so she essentially she had to fly. I don't know if they make the gut check. Well, you have to pay money to even sign up for gut check, right? Yep. You have to pay money to even sign up for gut check. I don't know if they make you fly there and get your own hotel accommodation. Well, they're not going to pay it's... your expenses. Yeah. No, I, it wouldn't, Fucking it wouldn't Brian shock. Cage, another, another excellent talent they, they passed pay their, up on, had to pay for everything. They don't pay expenses for the people in their fucking roster. Do you think they're going to pay the gut check people? So you do all that, and then you have to carry a person who's very clearly not as good a worker as you. Oh, and let's be honest. Oh, yeah, I hope. Oh, let me try to do it accent. I have seven years experience going on with uh, wrestling. No, you don't. You lying. Your uncle or whatever the fuck your uh, uh, wrestling dynasty is had the experience. You probably just like took bumps for like two and a half years and still couldn't get things right. Yeah, if she was wrestling for seven years and she has not been wrestling well for seven years, it's a, it's. It's or whatever very, the fuck number was. It might not even been seven, but she tried to make it like, oh, I've been doing this well, for a no, while. No, no, actually, no, I think you have it flipped. I think Eva Lee's was seven years, and Lady Tapa was like two years. Oh, there you go. Okay, it's that much of a margin of experience. Let's, let's go with the inexperienced one who could probably... Remember the last time this happened? Remember the last time we pushed out someone, some gigantic bitch who couldn't wrestle? Oh, yeah, Daphne got a stinger. Yeah, they did kind of ruin Daphne's entire career, didn't they? Yes, and I'm still fucking pissed about that. And I hope Daphne wins her lawsuit so well that they have to name the Impact Zone the Daphne Zone. Is that Moving lawsuit on. still going? Oh, it's it's about to come to blows, man. They they have like one more day to settle. Also, guys, I I just thought of um, I I'm pretty sure Kurt Angle's fucking Lady Tapa. Why? Because whoever he's fucking seems to get a contract with DNA. <laughs> it happened to Raka Khan. Raka Khan, Eric Jarrett, Jeff Jarrett. Um. <laughs> did you just say? Did you just say? Kurt Angle was fucking Jeff Jarrett. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I meant Jeff Jarrett was fucking Kurt Angle. <laughs> I'm in a bad mood. Now, 
<laughs> I'm done talking about this shit. I think the, the, our rants, No Leaf's actual like uh, cohesive opinion and backlash laughing say enough about this. <laughs> Joke checker idiots. Let's go to the actual only feud that's set up and booked right. Robbie T. Robbie E. I don't care. I don't care. About I don't Robbie. either. I don't care about the Robbie. Shut up. Oh, my, fa- <laughs> my face hurts now. <laughs> Uh, that was the most epic rant we've had on this show in such a long time. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, anyway. Did you take a nap after that? Jeez, I think I need to lie down. Dude, I'm <laughs> lying down. Fuck. You guys take over. <laughs> Anyways. um, uh. We have a little bit of hype for Robbie E versus Robbie T, and then uh, uh, we get our main event of the night, which is Ken Anderson versus James Storm. Um, uh, this match was. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, not even James Storm could really get that much of an interesting match out of Ken Anderson. No, it has Anderson has basically. Um, Sucks. I mean, he does not give a single fuck anymore. Yeah, he's on fucking autopilot. <clears throat> yeah, no one can get a good match out of him. So his main event was as good as the first match was, which is pretty damn good for uh, an opening match on Impact. It was pretty good. This main, they should have flipped it. They really should have. They should have flipped it and had this match open the show and Jeff Hardy and Austin Aries close the show. But, oh, God. Anyways, in case in, in case you didn't completely get it from the fact that we telegraphed it all the way through the show, the winner's Ken Anderson, aces and eights, gets the man advantage and lethal lockdown. And not a single person is, is surprised. Mm. Yeah. And not a uh, single fuck was given on that day. Oh, Daph- Daphne, don't move so fast. Oh, oh God. No, there he goes Back again. By. No, seriously, Back there's by. like, we have 15 minutes until the Indiana Jones Marathon. You don't have to hurry. Why are you watching? Why is he watching Indiana Jones? Daphne? Shouldn't he be doing something else with Daphne? <laughs> Dude, why Come on, are you... babe. It's Temple of Doom. We have to. It, he, there's a guy that pulls out a heart. Just let him go. Just let him go. It's it's more interesting than this match. <laughs> uh, we weren't even talking about the match. We're talking about. Uh, oh God! Bully Ray and Brooke Hogan are backstage kissing. Ew! Ew! Ah! <laughs> uh, what the? Oh my God! What? Oh God damn it! No leave. I was having an awesome dream. Why were you watching Temple of Doom with her? Why wouldn't I be watching Temple of Doom with her? Just because you're in a relationship with somebody in a dream world doesn't mean you have to fuck 24-7. I think you could just cuddle asking, and enjoy a movie. I think he's asking why weren't you watching Raiders instead. I love Raiders, but Temple of Doom is my favorite one. Why weren't you watching The Wrath of Khan? Because I have to talk about this fucking show, and if we don't hurry up, I'm probably going to miss it tonight. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, God. Then, this is um, how much I love you guys. I'm, gonna, I'm probably going to have to miss seeing Wrath of fucking Khan on the big screen tonight. And I just got punched all day, and I was looking forward to it, but I love the dark match so much. Wait, are you serious? Yes, I was boxing like the entire like afternoon for no, three hours. The, I don't care about you getting punched in the face. I'm talking about the Wrath of Khan thing. Oh yeah, Wrath of Khan's playing tonight at seven at the downtown theater. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, I know. I was looking forward to it, but hey, I love doing the dark match. So, well, well <laughs> let's well let's get this through. Uh, I don't even know. Oh my god, just the sight of them kissing. Yeah. Take it away. Anyway. Oh my god. Bully Ray's kissing a man, baby. Oh, wait. It's Brooke Hogan. Anyway, anyway, they they Bully... talk about lockdown, which is this week. Holy shit. I forgot it was this week. This week. Do we just do the predictions and end this episode? I don't care about those two playing tonsil hockey. 
Yeah, basically, uh, it's broke, generic promo and, number thirty-four. Yeah, it's it's it. They wanted this to be like what happened versus The Rock and Cena on Monday Night. Only, it's not. <laughs> it's not at all. And then, and then, I don't know Ace if I'm laughing Ace, because I'm because I think it's that ridiculous of an idea, or I'm just that depressed. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. So, Ace and H runs out. They beat up fucking Bully and Jeff, and then Team TNA runs out, and, you know, they have the huge schmals at the end of the fucking night. If Impact. Let's just go. Does someone want to find the Genesis card? Oh, right. No, I well, don't. Well, you keep saying it's Genesis. Why do you keep, why do you keep doing that? I don't know, because together. all these pay-per-views run the fuck together. All right, I've got the card. Oh. Lockdown is, the, Lockdown is the one where they have the Elevation X match, right? Yes, yes, that's exactly it. Anyways, all right, here's the card for Lockdown. Let's start at the bottom, work our way to the main event. First, we have Joey Ryan versus Joseph Park. Wait, what? Joey Ryan. Yeah, that's happening. It wasn't announced. Is, it, is that a thing? It's here on the website. J- Joey uh, Ryan. You people at home, I'm showing you the graphic. It exists. Um, I, I, I guess I'm going to take... Uh, uh, I, I, I guess I'm going to take Chris Parks. I don't... I, I, uh, wait, I, I mean, not Chris Parks. That's fucking abyss. I mean, Joseph Parks. I'm, I'm stunned that that's a match. Has that had any build? Nope. I no. Well, I think there, I think there was a confrontation between them at some point. Because Joseph Park has been having matches, but uh, yeah, this was not announced. Uh, okay, Next I'm gonna take. Match. All right, next yeah. match, a triple threat for the X Division title: Zema Ion, Christian York, and uh, Kenny King for the X Division title. Kenny King. Yeah, that's Kenny gonna King. be a good match, though. Yeah, Kenny yeah. is gonna retain probably. I That'd hope he retains. Match. I hope they don't make him drop the belt in like a month after he. Wait, no, did he win it a month ago, or was it like two weeks ago? It was two weeks like a week ago. And a half. I think. No, he he won it last week. Yeah, when RVD did the oh, fourth pitch, back himself it would out. Totally, it would totally be the TNA thing to do to have him just drop the belt. But I, I'm, yeah, but, I'm, ho- I'm really hoping common sense prevails. Yeah, but I, I really don't see him dropping it to either of these guys, who I don't think have even been on TV in the past couple months. Yeah, uh, well, yeah, I'm picking Kenny King. Still be a good match next. All right, up next, Robbie E versus Robbie T. Don't care! Robbie T. Rob Terry. Yeah. Uh, probably. I, I really don't care, though. I don't have to give back his old theme. That theme was actually pretty cool for a mediocre wrestler. Who, Rob is Terry? Me- is Rob Terry only mediocre? What What's below mediocre? Um, Competent? Subpar. Subpar. There you go. Yeah. Next. Yeah, that, that works. All right, up next, Gail Kim versus Velvet Sky for the knockouts title. Um, Velvet. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to say Velvet even though I could kind of see it going either way. Well, no, that's the thing. Like uh I mean, yeah, Gail Kim did beat Velvet Sky on uh, Impact tonight, but that that's not how this works. I mean, in t- in a title match, the knockouts champion always retains at first. That's how it's all. Yeah. Works. All right. <clears throat> Up next, we have a triple threat tag match. Daniels and Kazarian versus Bobby Roode and Austin Aries versus uh, the Eddie Memorial Tour for the World Tag Team titles. Okay, that match could be really cool. I just hope they didn't do the they don't make the mistake of what they did with LAX versus No Limits and Motor City Machine Guns in that that was a great match. It's just that they had it in a cage, so a lot of like the cooler shit they could have done was, you know, limited because of the cage, but uh, that being said, I see Rude and Aries retaining. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm 
I'm gonna go Rude and Aries retaining too. Even though I can I can see them completely fucking it up and putting the belts back on Chavo and Hernandez. Yeah, probably. But I'll, I'm gonna go with Rude and Aries too. Okay, and up next we have Angle versus Briscoe. Go to and, hell! Hey, what the hell? For some reason, on the graphic. It specifically says steel cage match. Sure, because this feud had so much months of buildup and animosity. No, it is locked down. Everything's a steel cage match. Isn't it? Look, uh, honestly, I checked out what? like five minutes ago. Why does it say steel cage match? It's locked down. Everything's a steel cage match. Oh my God. This fucking company. <laughs> How are we going to talk about WWE after this? <laughs> what the fuck? Uh, Why does it say... Kurt Angle wins. Kurt Angle let's go. Wins. Yeah, let's move away from No, 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 no. Wes Briscoe is going to win. That's my bold prediction. Wes Briscoe is going to win. You know what? That actually makes sense for, by TNA you know, it's rare that you want to match you that, you that you kind of wish that a math would just uh, devolve into just a prison rape, but if that could happen, I guess that'd be cool. <laughs> I am really just I don't give a fuck. I'm I'm gone. Okay. Oh god. Lethal lockdown. Team TNA versus the Aces and Eights. Which, uh... Which, you know what? And team... You know what? You know who's going to win this match? No I think the Alpha Beta's got this down. I mean, they've won every single part of the <laughs> of the frat competition. So, you know, as long as they do a good performance at the end, you know, with the uh, uh, skits, then they should be fine. I mean, who's going to beat them? Lambda, Lambda, Lambda? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to go with Dante and Randall in this one. You know, I, th I think they're actually going to be motivated to, like, get off their butts. And I know, you know, I know I, it's going to be tough performing away from the quick stop, but uh, I, I, I think they're going to pull it out. You said pull out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. How are we going to talk about wrestling for another hour now? We'll find a way. <laughs> Last match. <laughs> Bully Ray versus Jeff Hart. Okay, is, is Lockdown still doing the thing where everything is in a steel cage? Because this is also advertised as a steel cage match. So are just they just not doing all, all steel cages this, this year? Well, they never take the cage down. So why would they... Why would they... It, 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 it's, it's just... My brain is broken. I don't know. I, I I don't remember it being announced that only some of the matches were going to be in a steel cage. But they've got Lethal Lockdown and only two other matches specifically saying steel cage match. I don't know. It, like, I'm looking here. And it doesn't say anything about there not being regular matches on this card. Uh, I think I kind of feel like Bully's going to win due to some sort of Hulk Hogan shenanigans wherein Hulk Hogan uses his influence to get Bully the title. And I, 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 um, that's where I'm sort of, that's kind of where my mind's going. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if, um, if Jeff won. But I'm I'm kind of leaning towards Bully in this match. Yeah, I I actually kind of have a feeling that Bully Ray. They, it's about time Ho Hogan has really wanted to put the belt on this guy for a while now. And, and you now, know and what? They, I'm not. Well, no, and I'm saying just, they just might finally be pulling the trigger. Yeah, and I'm not I'm not too upset if Bully wins the title. I mean, I like Bully, and no, he, Bully has actually, has actually done a lot to improve himself over the past year. Yeah, he wor he's he's worked his ass off, so I'm 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 fine with him like getting his opportunity to run with the belt, especially because I think he's just more entertaining and more and more interesting character. But I I, I think what's gonna ruin it is gonna be whatever you know shenanigans they have that 
like gets bullied the title. Well, probably. I mean, like aces and eights is gonna interfere come hell or high water. Magpie. Magpie, I don't know who you're dreaming about wrestling now, but she's just not that into you. Brooke Hogan and Lady Tapa making out. I didn't do it. <laughs> Ew. Really? I'm not sure I can think of many more grosser images than that. Um. Um. Lady Tapa and China making out. That almost got him. Um. Uh, okay, I got it. I got it. Lady Tapa in China in an ultimate surrender match with the cold bass. Don't leave you have real bad issues. That <laughs> <laughs> was the best. That was the best thing you could have said to that. Seriously, man, you got to really take care of your comic collection. <laughs> I mean, look, it's in poor condition. What is going on? I've lost all sense of decency. What gets more screen time than Jay Lethal? The last remnants of our fucking sanity. <laughs> um, bland, <laughs> boring Ken Anderson not giving a shit gets more screen time. Oh, b- fans hitting Sting with a beer bottle get more screen time than Jay, Jay Lethal. Fans chanting, uh, uh, by the way, we kind of glossed over it, but the Impact Zone, usually I don't like that crowd, but prop to them for chanting no. Uh, we, we glanced because, over at Magpie, didn't? I mean, I mean that was, that was fucking awesome to me. But Magpie, someone get the fucking cattle prod. Mm. Magpie. Yeah. Uh, Magpie. I had this dream that we were. I had this dream that we're all that we're we've been producing the show for about like uh, two over two hundred episodes, and now we're t- talking about another crappy episode of the same show. <laughs> um. So. Uh- don't forget um, to don't forget to subscribe to us on Blip TV or YouTube to keep up to date with all our videos. You can also oh go God, ahead and, happening. <laughs> and give us a like on Facebook. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter at Dark Match Wrestling. You can also follow each of us individually on Twitter, except Magpie because he thinks he has better things to do, but he's still here with go us on yourself. Saturday night. Don't forget to check out TRE Productions. I do have better things to do. <laughs> to <laughs> who host all of our videos plus lots of other I great content. Been- I on <laughs> RVT Entertainment in the community the section. Text on the screen. Last but I have not to least, this shit. visit us at the Spooning Experiment forums, where you can where you can tell us how wrong we are about things, because that's what we're there for. Tano Bond's pecs. I'm missing that. I miss. <laughs> yeah, I'm no leaf clover. <laughs> I'm Magpie, and please send some beautiful woman to console me and let me <laughs> make the nightmares go away. <laughs> and I'm your fox, your friend Backlash, and I fucking love this show. <laughs> I swear to <laughs> God. Good night. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs>